Good evening. I now call to order the September 11th, 2023 meeting of the East Penn School District Board of School Directors. Uh, I'd like to uh, make mention that uh, after we recite the pledge, I'd like to stand and observe a moment of silence in recognition of the victims of 9-11 on this 22nd anniversary of that tragedy. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for Okay, next on the agenda, a request to address the board. We have four tonight, but before I call those people, I'd like to read the following statement. Those of you who may be unfamiliar with public comment, speakers <coughs> should feel free to express their opinion, comment, or question, and understand that this is not an interactive engagement with the board or with the administration. Please direct your comments to the chair, be respectful, not engage in profane rhetoric, and be mindful that others, including students, may be listening. Request that you consider that protocol in making your comments. For the members of the audience, please also be respectful and refrain from speaking during the public comment period. With that, I will now announce each speaker and their topic. When you step up to the podium, again, state your name, and you will have three minutes within which to speak, and I will give you a 30-second warning as to um, when your time is gonna be up. Uh, first tonight is uh, Connie Gishel, uh, here to talk about safety. where I'm supposed to stand? Yes. Okay. Hey. Hi. My name is Connie Gishel. I wanted to take the opportunity to thank the district for putting out their safety and security newsletter for the beginning of the school year, which outlines expectations for students such as hall pass procedures, electronic device expectations, vape detectors, and student conduct. While I appreciate the communication from the district, I also would like to share some feedback. The newsletter failed to address the perpetrator consequences for the unacceptable behavior. More importantly, it also failed to address the ownership the East Penn would take for district-wide safety and security. For example, most parents are very unfamiliar with the MTSS tiered behavior plans or restorative discipline procedures for East Penn utilizes. In short, MTSS addresses the emotional level of the perpetrator but fails to provide immediate tough disciplinary action to reinforce inappropriate conduct as well as to ensure future protection for the victims. I know firsthand the, that the process that the board and superintendent have in place is ineffective. Let me share why. In 2021, my daughter was the victim of a brutal attack by, another, by other students at LMMS. It resulted in a severe concussion and multiple months of doctors and care and therapy. We are still facing emotional and physical trauma today. Currently, my daughter is attending Emmaus High School and is among the same peer group of students who perpetrated the attack and continued to bully her. As a fellow community member and parent, I encourage all East Penn families to take a hard look at how your administrative teams across the East Penn School District are handling violent student behaviors. Last year at Shoemaker, police were called and a classroom was repeatedly cleared for a student who was violent towards classmates and the teacher. How effective was that MTSS for all those children subjected to that episode of violence? <coughs> How about Emmaus High School's Instagram account of over 45 video recordings of fights, even one involving a teacher being thrown to the ground? 
Uh, above all, where is the transparency of this board to acknowledge the safety concerns that were brought to you last April by a concerned parent in this forum? In closing, I often hear parents complain about the violence in our district, and while I know that this is an un unfortunate com commonplace these days, I also recognize that the fact that the district prides itself as a district of choice <coughs> rather than the rest of our laurels regarding district of choice. Administrators have an obligation to tax taxpayers to demonstrate such by not providing a good not only providing a good education, but also an environment where the entire East Penn community, parents, yeah. staff, students, and administrators can learn and thrive. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next, we have Scott Gishel, also about safety. Good evening. Just want to take a moment to follow up on my wife's comments. Um, I want to reinforce several points regarding the district's overall approach, and in my opinion, um, failure to adequately provide a safe and equitable learning environment for our children. The overall system for student discipline and accountability is failing. The MTSS and restorative discipline system are not effective and need to be re-evaluated. Administrators are not managing discipline in a way that will promote student accountability. Our experience at LMS, we're not the only family that's had this kind of experience. Other families have encountered similar experiences, including the district's failure to issue corrective disciplinary measures to minimize repeat offenders, as well as ensure a safe learning environment. The board is aware of these incidents, as other concerned parents had the courage to address this board publicly, like we are now. Because of a well-documented pattern of safety concerns and fighting at Lower McCungy Middle School, we asked for our son to, to be able to attend Iyer Middle School. We we're willing to provide transportation to and from Iyer Middle School, but the district denied our request. <coughs> Parents should be informed that there are documented video recordings of fights within the high school. In fact, there are incidents involving the Emmaus police that are public record from last year. 27 documented police arrests of Emmaus High School students, 27. Here are some of the charges that were levied. Disorderly conduct, simple assaults, aggravated assault, Drug possession, terroristic threats, resisting arrest, drug paraphernalia, uh, and theft. It is not clear to me whether you, the board members, are aware of these issues or not. That being said, there are several things that are clear to me. The district is clearly more concerned with its image and minim minimizing damaging optics than effectively dealing with the issue of student safety and discipline. The district has significantly more incidents than what the average parent is being led to believe. This is due to lack of transparency and public discourse. This board is either being kept in the dark on the issues or is similarly more interested in optics and image than constructive discussions on the issue. Regardless, our students, parents, and community deserve to have this issue taken and addressed seriously. The status quo is no longer good enough. Let's hope that November 7th, the community can elect board members who will be transparent, who will respect parent concerns, who will seek accountability, and who are not afraid to discuss tough issues that are actually facing our school community. Time's yours. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is uh, Stephen Krupp on wrestling. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Stephen Krupp. Um, here tonight with my daughter, Olivia, and I just want to address some of our concerns in regards to um, this upcoming season for winter sports, uh, particularly related to girls wrestling, uh, is now been sanctioned in the state of Pennsylvania as PIAA. Um, as our school is ranked 26th in our state out of 500 other schools, we have not um, taken on this responsibility to give the girls the same opportunity as the boys. I know the athletic department has made some great strides to allow for us to start a girls club, but um, from my understanding, the rules have changed since last year. 
Um, there's already 13 other different schools in our wrestling district that have already um, started a PIAA team. And I would hope that we could also start one as well. I am willing to offer my time as a coach um, and facilitate the opportunity to start a program, even though it's not in our school's budget yet, to do so um, and minimize any of those additional costs uh, as far as transportation and things like that as well. Um, I'd like to give my daughter some of the time. She wrote a little letter. Um, so if you could bear with me and let her read that. Um, so my name is Olivia Krupp. I'm a 10th grader here at EHS and I've grown up in the Emmaus School District. Last year I began wrestling and since then my life has been improved. Wrestling has made me healthy, gave me confidence and brought me into a community of unique individuals. Uh, however, this positive impact hasn't just stopped with me. My family has been involved in wrestling for many years, starting with my younger brother, Jake. Jake has wrestled for several years, and my sister, Stella, has also begun wrestling. Um, my dad, Stephen Krupp, is the president of the Emmaus Youth Wrestling Association and has also been coaching that program for the last six years. Um... Over the course of the summer, my parents and I have discussed wrestling for the boys team at EHS, but we have decided that we won't be pursuing that. Uh, instead, we want to officially establish a PIAA sanctioned Emmaus girls wrestling team and take on the responsibilities that would follow. Um, a girls wrestling team would provide equitable opportunities for girls and connect me and future wrestlers to post-secondary education as a great wrestling reputation creates incredible scholarship opportunities. Um, as a wrestler on the girls team, I can physically practice one-on-one -on -one with the boys, be coached by their coaches, and in general follow their practices, but have my own set of competition points. Um, if I were on a boys team and I used their points for my own tournaments, it would negatively affect the boys team. And um, yeah, I appreciate you taking the opportunity uh, to listen to us uh, talk about this. And we wanted to thank the athletic <coughs> department for attempting to set up the girls wrestling club. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Our next speaker is Renee Ziegler. Uh, no topic provided if you'd like to State, please, before you speak. Topic? Yes. Yes, it's regarding the uh, TSI. TSI, thank you. As, I, as you said, my name is Renee Ziegler, and I identify as a concerned parent and citizen of the United States. My goal is to talk to you regarding, uh, from a parent's perspective, as, fa as far as the recent announcement that L M LMMS has landed on the state's TSI list. No doubt the academic world has experienced many and significant challenges post-pandemic, and post-pandemic is still a moving target, I get it. However, trying to address all issues at one time and spread ourselves too thin is not the most effective way to dealing with these issues. Um, I'm a firm believer that you can either be reactive or proactive. It's your choice. I would rather the school board and the school system be proactive and not reactive. Putting out fires, 10 fires at a time, spreading ourselves too thin, spreading our resources too thin, causing more angst and anxiety within our uh, you know, teachers and faculty and our students and our parents. So I think we need to take a different approach to uh, the fact that we've got academic gaps, we have uh, emotional and mental issues that our student body is experiencing. But again, you can't take all 10, 12, 15 issues and try to address them all at the same time and think you're gonna be effective in doing it. You're going to fail epically. And who's gonna pay the price for that? Our children. Our children are our future, and it doesn't look like they have too good of a future right now, it looks pretty grim. Looking at statistics of when kids um, graduate from high school, a large majority of our kids are so far behind in academics 
that they can't even read a job application, comprehend a job application, let alone fill it out. So that doesn't give me a whole lot of hope. That gives me a lot of concern. So I hope that the board takes the comments of the parents and faculty and students, and again, looks at this from a proactive approach and not reactive, not putting a Band-Aid on a much larger, deeper, and potentially greater scope with regards to these issues. But look at them holistically. Talk to your students. Talk to your parents. Get their feedback. Students will tell you what they're struggling with. They're the great litmus test. Talk to them. They're very smart. And I'm sure they can educate all of us in this room. Find out what is their top priority, what is the biggest challenge that they're facing, and address those challenges one, two, three, four. Because in our numeric system, it doesn't go one, 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 two. Put it in priority, put it in order, be re proactive and not reactive, and address the major issues one at a time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, that concludes requests to address the board. Uh, moving on, uh, we have uh, approval of minutes for the August 28th, 2023 regular board meeting. So I have moved. a motion. So moved. Second. Are there any comments or questions? Okay, seeing none, Ms. Allen, please call the roll. Mrs. Bowen? Aye. Ms. Bowman? Aye. Mr. Bird? Aye. Mr. Champagne? Aye. Mr. Falegi? Aye. Mr. Jankowski? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Dr. Whitney? Aye. Dr. Levinson? Aye. Nine ayes. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Our next is the district update from Dr. Campbell. Yes, I'm going to start off with a few um, celebrations for various groups in the district. The first is our Emmaus High School No Place for Hate chapter was recently highlighted by in the 2023 Anti-Defamation League No Place for Hate Handbook and Resource Guide, specifically our students at Emmaus High School, and this club was recognized for their accomplishments in terms of leading change at Emmaus High School. I want to recognize Mrs. Larkin, who's our faculty advisor, as well as the entire No Place for Hate chapter, our students at Emmaus High School. In addition, College Board, a national organization, recently recognized several students from Emmaus High School, including Connor Yengar, Ibn Iwala Skunubi, Rafael Diaz, and Rebecca Lopez. Connor and Ibn have earned the National African American Recognition Award, and Rafael and Rebecca have earned the National Hispanic Recognition Award. Again, two academic awards for exceptional PSAT scores in combination with a GPA over 3.5. So great job to those four students. <coughs> We'd also like to recognize some alumni from Emmaus High School, specifically 2015 graduate Hannah Nicole Mayer. She recently, um, her book reached number two on the New York Times bestseller list, specifically the book Assistant to the Villain, um, again reached that number two on that top list. We also want to recognize Andrew Crossley, who's a 2007 grad of Emmaus High School. He recently fabricated a metal statue to pay tribute to the Colombian textile workers, and his work is on display at a town hall in Lowell, Massachusetts. And so in case community members weren't aware of our alumni news, this is a section on our East Penn website that you can go and check out the continued amazing accomplishments of former East Penn students. We continue to work on ways in which we can network and communicate with our community. Um, for those who are interested in the topics that are discussed at a board meeting but perhaps aren't able to join us in person or watch um, via live stream, we now are offering a, a highlights of our meeting agenda the day following each school board meeting. This is just a very quick snapshot of three key highlights from each topic or each item that's discussed at the board meeting. We provide you with, again, a general summary of the topics and the specific time if you want to go back to the video and watch the detailed conversation that happens on that specific topic. In addition, for families of current students in the district, 
This week, we're going to be sharing a district-wide communication reminding all of our families that it's that time of year to update preferences for receiving district communication through School Messenger. That's our school communication app. Parents can opt to receive phone, email, or text messages specific to school closings. Before you know it, snow days will be, uh, will be here. Um, so you can choose how you wish to hear communication from us regarding um, those closings, alerts, and or emergencies. So please watch out for that information that's going to come out later this week. We also are currently trying to update our golden age card contact list. This is for senior citizens who are residents of the East Penn School District. If you are a current golden age card holder and or if you're interested in obtaining a golden age card, please update your contact information on our district website and or you can reach out to anyone here at district office and we'll help you get a card. And final reminder, um, we have our third annual East Penn Education Foundation golf outing, which is planned for Monday, October 2nd. Um, if you've been listening or watching our school board meetings, you know that very often we receive generous donations from the East Penn Education Foundation. Um, over the past about 10 years, that includes almost $100,000 in scholarships for our teachers for great work in their classrooms, as well as several larger scale projects that our foundation has funded. So I encourage community members to support the, the Education Foundation through their golf outing on Monday, October 2nd. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Campbell. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Ms. Bowman. Um, yes, it's always good to hear about our successful students and graduates. Is the graduate section of the website a new initiative or something sad? We've had alumni news there um, probably for about two or three years now, um, but we try to spruce it up every so often, so, yeah, it, and, it and, and just, highlight it, because it's, it might not, you might not realize it's there. Yeah, it was good to see those accomplishments. I, I did want to make one comment. Um, I don't always do this, but, um, it, it was my understanding that we were starting a, the girls wrestling team, so I, I was a little confused by the public comment tonight, but in case you are looking for any feedback from the board, I, I am actually in full approval of us doing that, um, especially these things where we're fixing an inequity that's been longstanding. I, I think um, it's important for us to get um, to fix those as fast as possible. Yeah, I, again, I, I will also just follow up to that. I actually had the um, privilege of meeting Olivia as well as her dad, I believe, this summer when they were in with Coach Best, our wrestling coach, as well as um, Mrs. George, our athletic director. And, and those were some of, I believe, the um, somewhat early conversations about the girls' wrestling club. Your um, you're right, as I had shared with the board in, a, in my superintendent report, we do, we do have plans for a girls wrestling club for the upcoming school year. Um, I appreciate the feedback that was given tonight in terms of further discussions about making it a, I'm gonna say full-fledged PIAA sport, which I believe is also conversations that have recently happened with our athletic director. So it's just about identifying what additional steps need to be taken. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Anything else from the board? Okay, thank you, Dr. Campbell, for that update. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, personnel. Uh, I'd like to just make a note that an addendum was added earlier today with some additional agenda items. Uh, so that's been posted, that was posted previously, and then copies of have, were, were placed in the back prior to today's meeting. I might have a motion for to accept the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, are there any questions or comments from the board? I actually have, have one question. Um, I just saw this on the on the addendum uh, just prior to coming tonight, so I apologize not being relaying my question initially or earlier. Uh, but I did have a question about uh, <coughs> uh, the uh, temporary professional employee appointment uh, for the uh, Social Dependent Studies Department at EHS. Um, I'm just curious what courses uh, this individual will teach and, and what impact uh, having this person is going to have on what we're already doing in terms of uh, student distribution classes. Is that something that you can answer? 
Um, I can find out the exact courses that the teacher will be teaching. I will say the vacancy is created by the resignation of a, of a, a teacher who actually was teaching German. And so one of our teachers who was dual certified picked up that <coughs> social studies, uh, picked up the German piece. So this particular sub um, this particular employee, I should say, is now picking up those social studies classes. So the exact courses at Emmaus yeah. High School, I can find out for you. I don't have those immediately okay. at my fingertips. Okay. I, I, I think I'm just more, more heartened that uh, we're, we're backfilling the position and, and um, um, you know, allowing, allowing those students to be distributed. We are. So this is these are existing students ex assigned to a class. And again, there was a teacher who was in there who's now transitioning to a German class. And so this is a teacher who's now picking up what another teacher had been teaching. I see. OK, thank you, Dr. Campbell. Are there any other questions from the board? OK, seeing none, Ms. Allen, please call the roll. Ms. Bowman. Aye. Mr. Bird? Aye. Mr. Champagne? Aye. Mr. Falegi? Aye. Mr. Jankowski? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Dr. Whitney? Mrs. Bowen? Aye. Dr. Levinson? Aye. Nine ayes. Okay, thank you, Ms. Allen. Uh, moving on to business operations. Uh, if there are no objections, I'd like to take items A through D together. I may have a motion. So moved. Second. Are there any questions or comments from the board? <clears throat> okay, seeing none, Ms. Allen, please call the roll. Mr. Bird? Aye. Mr. Champagne? Aye. Mr. Falegi? Aye. Mr. Jankowski? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Dr. Whitney? Aye. Mrs. Bowen? Aye. Ms. Bowman? Aye. Dr. Levinson? Aye. Nine ayes. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Um, next is uh, Ms. Curriculum, uh, educational conferences. Uh, may I have a motion to approve those? So moved. Second. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Okay, seeing none, Ms. Allen, please call the roll. Mr. Champagne? Aye. Mr. Falegi? Aye. Mr. Jankowski? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Dr. Whitney? Aye. Mrs. Bowen? Aye. Ms. Bowman? Aye. Mr. Bird? Aye. Dr. Levinson? Aye. Nine ayes. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Uh, next is policy. Uh, there's a third reading of a set of policies that we looked at the last couple of meetings. It's my understanding that no changes have been made. Uh, from the second reading. Uh, so given that, uh, I'd like to take a motion to approve the, the, the policies. So moved. Second. Are there any further questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Champagne? Yes, now that we're at the third reading, what is the timing for the administrative regulations to support these, especially uh, policy 109? While Dr. Povolitis makes his way up, I will say, share that actually um, we've had teams that have begun working on the admin regs that would be aligned with these policies. And so I think you'll be happy to hear that the turnaround will be quick. Yes, so we are in a final draft version. Uh, once these are approved, uh, we plan the administrative regulations will move forward for our central office team um, to approve uh, at likely the next central office meeting. Okay, very good, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. Any additional questions from the board? Mr. Flaherty. Um, with policy 109, after um, this policy more likely will go through, will we then have the opportunities to actually see the procedure for 109? Admin regs typically don't come to the board, correct, Mr. Fisher? But if I were to request to be able to see how that procedure is going to work, would I have the ability to do that? Uh, we'll figure something out for okay. you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none, Ms. Allen, please call the roll. Mr. Falegi. Aye. Mr. Jankowski. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Dr. Whitney. Aye. Mrs. Bowen. Aye. Miss Bowman. Aye. Mr. Bird. Aye. Mr. Champagne. Aye. Dr. Levinson. Aye. Nine ayes. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Uh, there are no other items, uh, so moving on to announcements. Uh, tonight, there was an executive session held. The topics were personnel, confidential matters, and negotiations. Uh, another announcement, our, the district will be closed on Monday, September 25th. Our next regular board meeting will be on Monday, October 9th, 2023, 7.30 here in the boardroom. Uh, with no further business, I'd now like to take a motion to adjourn.
So moved. Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Meeting adjourned. Everybody, please have a good night. And go Jets. <laughs> hey. Wait a second.